Hey boys and girls, this is Miss Coker. I hope you're doing well. Uh, so before we get started, I wanted to tell you about something that happened to me last night. Lately, I've been spending a lot of time in the house and I've been eating a lot. I don't know what it is about being stuck in your house, but you just seem to eat a lot more for some reason. So after the kids went to bed, my husband and I snuck in to their candy stash and we found this nice big Hershey bar. We decided to eat it. But we wanted to leave a little bit just in case the kids caught us. We didn't want to eat the whole bar. Before we knew it, the bar was almost gone. And my husband, Jose, said, holy cow, there's only three twelfths of this candy bar left. And I said, Jose, that's not three twelfths of the candy bar. That's one fourth of the candy bar that's left. So take a look. What do you think? Is this three twelfths of the candy bar? Or is this one fourth of the candy bar that's left? Well, let's put aside the candy bar for a second and let's get to some math. We'll talk about the candy bar later. So for today's lesson, you need a square piece of paper. So what you're going to do first is you are going to fold your paper in half. Get that fold nice and crisp. You might want to use your fingernails a little bit. And then unfold your paper and color one half of it. Now this is an art class, this is math class, so it's fine if it's messy. So I colored one half of my paper. Let me just write that fraction one half on the board. So one half is colored. Now I want you to go ahead and take your paper, fold it back in half. Now fold it in half once again, making a smaller square. Get those edges nice and crisp. And when you're ready, open it up. And if you need to, trace your folds so they're easier to see. All right, now it looks like we've done our extra fold. I traced my fold so it's easy for you to see. And I want you to tell me what fraction of this paper is shaded now. Well, did I hear somebody say two fourths? Did you color something extra? I only told you to color one part, as in one half before. So how is it that two fourths are colored now? Oh, okay. What I heard somebody say was when you doubled the number of total folds, it ended up doubling the parts that were actually colored. You didn't color anything extra. You just changed the look of it by changing the number of folds. Originally, we had two parts, but when you made that extra fold, it doubled the number of parts, giving us four parts. And doubling those parts ended up also doubling the parts that were colored. So instead of having one of two parts colored, now we have two of the four parts colored. So what you're telling me is one half is really the same amount as two fourths. It just looks a little bit different. Let me see if I could draw a picture to show this. So what you said was we had one half and we still have one half. It's just that we doubled the number of parts when we folded it. Let's try this again. Fold your paper back up the way it was into that small square. Now fold it in half again. So I've opened up my paper. I've traced all those new folds so they're super easy to see. Now what fraction of my paper is colored? Wait a second. I heard somebody say four eighths. Four eighths? I only told you to color one half. No. I get why you said two fourths before because we ended up doubling the parts when we made that extra fold. So what happened here? Oh, so when we made the extra fold, when we folded it in half yet again, it ended up doubling the total number of parts again. So the extra fold caused us to double the total number of parts and that caused us to double the parts that were shaded. We didn't color anything extra. We didn't take anything away. It's still the same amount that's colored. It's just that the name is different because the number of folds are different or the number of parts are different. We still have that one half that's colored, but here are our new folds or our new parts. So now we have four eighths shaded. So what you're telling me is one half is equal to two fourths and one half is also equal to four eighths. Okay, let's do this one more time. Now I want you to fold your paper back up just like this into that tiny rectangle. 
Now go ahead and fold it one last time. Get that crease nice and tight, but this time do not open your paper. Notice the patterns on the board. Originally we had one half shaded. When we folded our small shape in half again, it doubled the number of parts and ended up doubling the parts that were shaded. We didn't color anything extra, we didn't take anything away, we still had the same amount sh shaded, it just changed the look or changed the name because we had extra parts. Then we took our small shape and folded it in half again. Again, we didn't color anything extra, we didn't take anything away, but by folding in half an extra time, we doubled the number of parts and that ended up doubling the parts that were shaded. So now, thinking about what you noticed on the board, think about what fraction of your paper is shaded now. You're not coloring anything extra, you're not taking anything away. The only thing that changed is the number of folds or the number of parts on your paper. All right, so how many of you said that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, sixteenths of your paper is shaded. Eight sixteenths of your paper. Now that is such a different fraction from what we started with, yet it's the same amount because you can see it is still really just one half. It's crazy to think that this one half can be represented in so many different ways even though it's really just the same amount. When two or more fractions can be used to represent the same amount, those fractions are equal or equivalent. Because one half, two fourths, four eighths, and eight sixteenths can all be used to represent the same amount, these are all called equivalent fractions. So now think back to that Hershey bar that Jose and I were eating. Jose said that he thought three twelfths of the bar was left. I said one fourth of the bar is left. Is it possible that both of us are right? Have a good day, boys and girls. Thank you.